Number 39, professional application. One of the waste products of a nuclear reactor is plutonium. This nucleus is radioactive and decays by splitting into a helium-4 nucleus and a uranium-235 nucleus, the latter of which is also radioactive and will itself decay some time later. The energy emitted in the plutonium decay is 8.4 times 10 to the minus 13 joules and is entirely converted to kinetic energy of the helium and uranium nuclei. The mass of the helium nucleus is 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, while that of the uranium is 3.92 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. Note that the ratio of the masses is 4 to 235. Letter A, calculate the velocities of the two nuclei, assuming the plutonium nucleus is originally at rest. Uh, so here we have a little picture. Okay, here I uh, drew the helium nucleus and the uranium nucleus. Basically, this whole unit before um, the uh, decay happens uh, is a plutonium atom. All right, so this is basically held together, and when it's held together, it's called plutonium. After they, after the plutonium decays, uh, eventually these two nuclei will be produced. I chose the helium to be propelled, uh, propelled to the uh, left, and the uranium to the right. All right, so this is basically, if we think about the nature of this question, it is like a reverse inelastic collision, okay? Because before the collision uh, occurs, they're held together, and then afterwards they're going to be separated. So therefore, I'm thinking about conservation of momentum. I know the momentum before the explosion or decay or collision, whatever you want to call it, uh, will equal the momentum uh, after, okay? So before they're held together, Right, so therefore it's the mass of the plutonium nucleus multiplied by the velocity of that plutonium nucleus. And after then the decay occurs, the helium and uranium are then produced. Okay, so it'd be the mass of helium multiplied by the velocity of that helium nucleus, right, after uh, the uh, decay occurs, plus then the mass of the uranium multiplied by the velocity of the uranium nucleus after. Uh, they told us that the velocity of plutonium was zero, right? It's originally at rest, they told us, and therefore this whole term just drops out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, uh, let's just say this term on over to the left-hand side, all right? Just so that we can see that the uh, momentum, basically, of helium, okay, multiplied by, which is not, not multiplied, but the momentum is the whole thing here, um, will be equal, right, will be equal to the momentum of the uh, uranium nucleus after the decay, but just opposite in sign, okay? So this looks good, I'm gonna stop right here. But what I realize is I need to solve for the velocities, but I don't know them. I don't know them what they are after the collision. All right, and therefore now I gotta change uh, gears and I wanna find another equation that talk about energy, right? So we've uh, approached this in a couple of problems prior now. Um, so basically what we're looking to do is the system is gaining kinetic energy right? Um, because initially it was at rest, and then now there's going to be some velocities to these um, nuclei. So therefore, I know that kinetic energy will be gained, all right? And the gaining kinetic energy um, will be equal to the final kinetic energy, right? Minus the initial kinetic energy. Oops. Minus the initial kinetic energy. All right. So the gaining kinetic energy, which by the way, that's what this represents, okay? will be equal to the final kinetic energies. Now notice, final after the decay happens, we have two separate pieces, right? We got the helium and the uranium. So it's gonna be one half times the mass of the helium atom multiplied by the velocity of that helium atom after the, um, after the decay occurs. And that's gonna be then added to, right? Because we're talking about the final. So the final is two pieces, right? Plus half then the mass of the uranium multiplied by uh, the velocity of that uranium nucleus after squared minus the initial, but what's the initial kinetic energy? Remember the initial plutonium atom here when they're together is zero, right? The velocity is zero, so therefore there is no initial kinetic energy. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. So now, why don't we factor out a common half? So kinetic, kinetic energy gain would equal one half multiplied by the mass of helium times the velocity of helium squared plus then the mass of uranium multiplied by the velocity of uranium uh, squared, right? Th these are all after the collision, by the way. I'm just gonna leave out the A's. For, yeah, never mind, I'll put them in. All right, so now, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We, ha we have two equations with two unknowns. That was the whole goal, all right? So we have uh, one unknown, two unknown, and look, 
one unknown, two unknowns, and they're the same. So basically this turns out to be a system of equations problem. All right, so now we can solve this however we like uh, because we know everything else. So why don't we solve uh, this equation for the velocity of uranium? Okay. Um, I don't know what this, what the heck is this little thing down there? I don't know what I wrote there. It should be A, right? Should be after. Um, so solving this for the velocity of uranium after, I'd have to divide out by the mass of uranium, correct, from both sides. And therefore, the velocity of uranium after uh, the decay occurs would be equal to negative mHe times VHEA all over mu. Okay, so this is that. Now what I'm going to do is take this value and plug it on into my equation over here. Right, for the velocity of uranium after the collision, since they're equal. So let's do that. So now here we have the kinetic energy gain will be equal to one half uh, multiplied now by mHe times VHEA squared plus mu multiplied now by uh, negative mHe times VHEA all over mu and that whole thing squared. All right, so now let's just uh, simplify this a little more. I realize though in this equation I have only one unknown, right? And now that's what I'm gonna look to solve the equation for. So all at once I'm gonna get rid of the half on this side, multiply the right-hand side here by two as well as then the left, all right? So it's gonna be two times the kinetic energy gain, all right, will be equal to then MHEVHEA squared, plus then mu, and now basically what I'm gonna do is look to distribute the squared term to each, all right? Let's assume the negative is tied to this, and therefore when I square this term, it becomes positive, right? So then it's gonna be mhe squared, vhea squared, all over mu squared. Great, what can we cancel? We can cancel this mu, and then one of the mu's on the bottom, so we can get rid of the squared term. And then what I realize is now I have two terms, right? I have this thing and I have this thing with a common variable. So I'm gonna factor that on out, okay? So let's do that. Actually, let me leave them crossed out. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna do two times the kinetic energy gain, all right, will be equal to uh, VHEA squared, multiplied now by the mass of helium, plus then this thing, right? Plus then the mass of helium squared all over the mass of uranium. And this equation should start to be looking very similar to other equations you have seen before. The whole goal here is to solve for, right, velocity of, the, of helium. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to divide this whole term on out from the right, and then divide it on over to the left. And since I'm running out of space, I really don't have a lot of space here at all. I'm gonna start writing it on the bottom left. So here we're going to have uh, two times the kinetic energy gain. All right, times the kinetic energy gain will be equal then, all, well, let me say all divided by the mass of helium plus then the mass of helium squared all divided by the mass of uranium. And that now will be equal to the velocity of helium after the collision squared. Right, I gotta find the velocity, not the velocity squared. So I gotta square root both sides. Okay, whoops, I gotta square root both sides. So when I do that, I can get rid of the square here, right? So let me just erase that. And there's our formula. All right, here's the formula. So now all I need to do is plug in my values uh, for the variables over here, okay? Let's do that. So this will be equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy gain, which we already mentioned before, the kinetic energy gain was that value because that's exactly what it told us in the problem. Uh, 8.40 times 10 to the minus 13, all right? And that's all now going to be over the mass of helium, 6.68, 6.68 times 10 to the negative 27, uh, plus then 6.68 times 10 to the negative 27, that whole thing is squared. All right, all over uh, 3.92 times 10 to the minus 25. Okay, and let's see what we get. So let's plug it on this, into the calculator. Uh, so this one's going to be nice and fun, right? So let's do um, 2 times 
times 10 to the negative 13th. All right, divide that by now parentheses 6.68 times 10 to the negative 27th plus a new parenthesis here, um, 6.68 times 10 uh, to the negative 27th, that's squared. And then divide that now by 3.92 times 10 to the negative 25th. Close those parentheses. And now what we have to do is take the square root. All right, so we take the square root. Where are we here? All right, so the velocity now of the helium atom. Um, where should I write? I'm going to write it. Oh, I'm going to write it up here at the top. Okay, so the velocity of helium. All right, should be equal to. <clears throat> okay, 1.57 times 10 to the, uh, what do we got? 3, 3, 7 meters per second. Okay, it sounds a little high. Let me just double check my math. All right, just give me one second. I'm going to do the, the fraction there in, in um, uh, piecemeal. So let's do 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27. Square that. So that becomes that, then take that and divide it by 3.92 times 10 to the minus 25th. Add to that value then 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27. Great, and then take two times 8.4 times 10 to the minus 13, and then divide it by that answer. And then, yeah, no, it looks right. And then, yeah, okay. So that, that is the value, uh, that's the velocity of helium. Um, after the um, after the decay. And now if I had to find the velocity of now uranium, I can use this equation, right? Because I just found this term. So why don't we do that? All I'm gonna do now is take this value and plug it on in here to find the volume, uh, to find the volume, to find the velocity of uranium after the uh, decay. All right, so the velocity of uranium after the decay here, these were both after. All right, uh, will be equal to now uh, negative. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, I'm rushing here. So anytime you remember, anytime you take the square root, I'm just thinking about the signs. Anytime you, anytime you take the square root of a value, it always works out to be positive and negative. Okay, now thinking about my picture, what value must this velocity be? It has to be negative because I chose the helium atom to move to the left. Okay, so this is a negative number. Uh, otherwise, the signs, you know, the directions in my picture will not make sense. I, I would have the right magnitudes, but not the right directions. All right. So now let's do the velocity of the uranium atom. So let's plug it into the formula I just mentioned. So we'd have negative the mass of helium. So 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27th. And multiply that now by the negative 1.57 times 10 to the 7th that we just found. Then divide that by the mass of uranium, which is 3.92 times 10 to the minus 25th. And here we get a value of, uh, oop, not six. It's 2.68 or so, 2.68 times 10 to the, let's see, three, four, five, times 10 to the fifth. Okay, times 10 to the fifth, and that is meters per second. So that is the velocity of uranium. Okay, so that should take care of letter A, and now we get to move on to letter B. So how much kinetic energy does each nucleus carry away? So basically, since we now found the um, uh, since we now found the velocities of each, right? We can now find their respective kinetic energies by just saying that kinetic energy, let's say, of helium here will be equal to one half times the mass of helium, right? Multiplied by then the velocity of helium squared. So I'm just going to plug in the values uh, in my calculator, but I'm not going to write them down since I'm just running out of space. So it's 0.5 times the mass of helium, which is 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27. Multiply then by that velocity. It's negative times a negative, so it's a positive. So 1.57 times 10 uh, to the seventh, and that'll be squared. So here we get a value of <clears throat> uh, 8. So here, 8.23, uh, 8.23 times 10 to the minus 13. And that's in joules. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy of helium. And guess what? Now I'm going to do the same process for uranium. So the kinetic energy of uranium should be equal to one half times the mass of uranium multiplied by the velocity of uranium squared. 
So the kinetic energy there and then of uranium will be 0.5 times the mass of uranium, which is 3.92 times 10 to the minus 25th, multiplied by the velocity that we just found, 2.68 times 10 to the fifth, n squared. And what do we get here? We get 1.41 or so. So 1.41 times 10 raised to the negative 14th. And that's in terms of joules. All right, and that does it, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you so very much for tuning in. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, give us a little hand if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button. Uh, we so appreciate it very much. And we definitely appreciate you guys checking out our videos. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, both my sister and I do appreciate it. And um, we're having a lot of fun doing this. So um, thank you again. And I look forward to helping you out with the next question. Have a great day.